things, that very continuous cultivation, which is performed under the guidance of Shuddha Vaishnav, of pure devotee of the Lord, that is called Uttama Bhakti. Again, again you should do it. And very... So, Slowly, that all can understand. Can you repeat again? Yeah. The continuous and unbroken cultivation of every single one of our endeavors which are performed by our body, by our mind, and by our words, which are meant exclusively for the benefit of Krishna. This will be called Uttam Bhakti if such an endeavor is also completely devoid of any other desire and it is not covered by karma, the fruitive activities, jnana, the cultivation of knowledge to attain liberation, yoga, the development of mystic power, and dry renunciation. Or then it can be called uttama bhakti. So this is the outline but of the in definition. The guidance of? Yes. And in the Anugatya, under the guidance of a pure devotee, associate of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. This is called Uttama Bhakti. This is the general definition. But Srila Vishnu Chakrabhi Thakur, he has entered into this subject matter very, very deeply. First of all, he says that this entire verse revolves around the verb uh, Shilanam. Shilanam, what does it mean? Shil Dhatu, the verbal root Shil means a cultivation. In other words, bhakti is kriyatmaka. It's an activity. It's an activity. Gyan, knowledge is not an activity. If you know that you are thirsty and you need water, but you have no water, then what is the benefit? No benefit. And if you're actually drinking water, then what is the requirement of knowledge? So gyan oh, has no power or influence, but bhakti is an activity which is performed in two ways. Shildhatu, this verb, has two parts. One is called Cheshtarup and one is called Bhavrup. Cheshtarup means an activity which is performed by the senses of maybe the material body or spiritual body depending on the stage of the devotee. And Bhavrup means oh, the feelings of the heart. So Bhakti has two sides. Cheshtarup, the activities, and Bhavrup, the feelings of the heart. Cheshtarup is also two kinds. Now Cheshtarup is divided into two types. That is called Sadhanrup and... Prabhityatma, Sadhan Rup and Karya Rup. Sadhanrup is practiced by the devotees who are in the level of Sadhan Bhakti. They are practicing in this world. And that Sadhanrup is also divided into two parts. Pravriti Atmaka Chestarup and Nivriti Atmaka Chestarup. In other words, the activity of the devotees who are doing a practice, a sadhan in this world, has two aspects. First, Pravriti Atmaka Chestarup means that we will have to do all of those things which are very uh, favorable for our advancement in devotional service. Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Ashnam, Bandhanam. All the angas of bhakti very strongly will have to follow that. We'll have to accept all the things which are favorable, such as utsaha nistya dharya tat tat karma pravatanat. Being enthu very enthusiastic, having confidence, being very patient, accepting all the angas of bhakti, following them carefully. And in this way, this is called pravriti atmaka chastarupa. Then nivriti atmaka chastarupa will also have to make a chesta, an endeavor, to very firmly give up all those things which are destructive to bhakti. What is destructive? Atyahara, priyasas cha, prajalpo niyamagraha. Overeating, overcollecting, over endeavoring, having a bad association, speaking unnecessarily about mundane things. All of these Especially things. Especially offenses. Give up. Aparad. Don't make any offense to the chanting of Harinam. Mm? Don't make any offense in the Seva, Seva Aparad, Vaishnava Aparad. Do not offend Guru or Vaishnavas in any way. Other all kinds of honors. Mm. So this, this, this Cheshtarup has two parts, Sadhana and Karajarup. The Sadhana has two parts, 
Pravriti Atmaka Chastarup and Nivriti Atmaka Chastarup. To accept the very favorable things and to very firmly, strongly give up the negative things. This also requires very enthusiastic endeavor. Hmm? It's easy to be enthusiastic about Kirtan, hmm? but when it becomes time to become enthusiastic about not watching TV or hmm, hmm, drinking tea or coffee or anything, this any addictions, then we don't have so much enthusiasm. Hmm? But no, bhakti is not like this. Enthusiasm is a knife with two edges. It should be on the positive side and enthusiasm to also give up the negative things. So that is called the sadhan rup. It has two parts. The karya rup means activities which are undertaken by the devotee who has attained bhav bhakti. In other words, his anubhavs, such as <coughs> laughing, crying, rolling on the ground, he has uh, contortions of the body, yawning, drooling, all these anubhavs, they're included in the karya rup. So the anubhavs and also satikabhavs, they're in this category. Now we've discussed the chesta rup, now we'll discuss the bhav rup. How is bhakti as an emotion, as a transcendental feeling, service to Krishna? This is divided into uh, two parts. One part is called stai bhav rup and the other part is called Sanchari Bhav Rup. When the devotee sadhan bhakti is mature, he will attain Rati, or the Stai Bhav. He'll have one fixed emotional relationship with Krishna. It may be in Dasa, Sakya, Vatsalya, or Madhurya, as a servant, as a friend, as a parent, or as a beloved. Hmm? So this permanent sentiment towards Krishna, this is called the Stai Bhav, or Bhav Rup. And Sanchari Bhav, it means that this permanent mood of love for Krishna is like an ocean. But that ocean has many waves. So the waves which are rising and falling in that ocean, there are 33 types of Vyavachari Bhav. Hmm? Such as sometimes devotee becomes very proud of Krishna. Sometimes he feels great humility, especially at the time of separation. Sometimes the devotee becomes afraid. Tras Bhav. Marsha, indignation. So many moods like waves rise and fall in the ocean of the Stai Bhav. So all of these things, they are included in the word Shilanam. Bhakti is a cultivation of all the endeavors of body, mind and words and also of spiritual moods. This is called Shilanam. But Shila Rupa Goswami has given one prefix here. What is that? Anu. Anu Shilanam. Hmm? These endeavors and these moods should be not only shilanam, but anu shilanam. The word anu has many meanings, but two are very prominent. The first meaning of anu is nirantara. Bhakti is nirantara taryamai. It's continuous. The endeavor should not be stopped at any time. Like Bharat Maharaj. Bharat Maharaj was performing his devotional service. But when he saw the deer drowning, that baby deer, he took the deer out and he began to take care of this deer. So he interrupted his bhakti and in his next life he took birth as a deer due to attachment to that deer. So here Bharat Maharaj, he was doing bhakti, but the, what was the defect? Anu. It was not nirantar jamai. It was not continuous. He took a break and that break was a very great calamity in his life. So bhakti should not have any interruption. It should be nirantar, continuous. The second important meaning of the word anu is anugatya. Anugatya means to be under guidance. To be under guidance. Those who are near and dear to Krishna, the associates of Krishna, if we will serve Radha and Krishna under their guidance, only then it will be bhakti. If someone will try to make an independent endeavor to approach Radha and Krishna, then their service will never be accepted. But if one will try to become, as Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu explained, Gopi Bhatu Padakamalyo Das Das Anu Das word Anu comes. Hmm? The servant of the servant of the servant of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, servant of the servant of Radha and Krishna, being very carefully under their guidance, then Bhakti will be successful. This Anu Gachi will have to begin in this world. In this life, we must be without any independent mood. We will have to make our heart's desire one with the heart's desire of Guru. Guru Mukapadya Bhakya Chitete Kuriya Akya Ana Kuriya Mani Asha My only desire is this 
that my heart should become one with the words emanating from the lotus lips of Guru. So this Anubhati will begin here. And if it will not begin here, how will we go to that world? Why? Because the Laliti Vishaka, Chichacham, Pagalata and others, the associates of Radharani, they are following Shimati Radhika. She is Yuteshwari. And the Manjuris, Rupa Manjuri is following Lalita Saki. And all the other Manjuris are following Rupa Manjuri. So the transcendental bhakti of the spiritual world itself is Anubhatya Mai. It's under guidance of those who are more inspired and perfect in their transcendental love. So if in this world we'll not accept this principle, how will we ever attain that world? Oh, it will be quite impossible. So here Rupa Goswami Pad said, Anu, Anu Shilanam.
I tell that all. You should sing Australian melody. <laughs> so you are Australian melody. Thank you. As you like.